specifically targeted regulation, I'm talking company by company level specificity. At that tech monopoly scale, there's nothing stopping the monopoly from just saying, well, I'm going to take 25%, or I'm going to take 20%. Amazon's just going to increase it. You're going to get a nice settlement, and you will get supply side protections, which are needed. You're never going to win this argument by saying that the consumer is 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 treated unfairly. And and the privacy stuff is a red herring. The privacy stuff actually helps the tech monopolies. We've seen this in the GDPR because what GDPR did is it created all these rules and requirements and laws around privacy and data tracking and data storage. And if you didn't comply with these rules properly, you get fined. Guess who has the best data and the best technology to comply with these rules? Oh, Google and Facebook. Guess what happened post-GDPR? Google and Facebook's share of digital advertising in Europe went through the roof because it meant that Google and Facebook's smaller competitors, either in advertising or in other, in other kind of platform businesses, those are smaller businesses. They had to divert resources away to comply with these laws. Google and Facebook have infinite resources compared to their smaller competitors. Google and Facebook can comply better to the rules. And what you saw is actually a general shift of ad dollars to the tech monopolies in Europe. Have Google and Facebook been fined under GDPR? No. You want to know who was fined under GDPR? Like British Airways and Marriott for like 150 million euros, right? I mean, when you think about GDPR, do you think what comes to mind, right? Is it, oh, British Airways is abusing my data, we need to create a law to rein in this just crazily abusive company using my data in all these wonky ways. British Airways. No, that's not the image that comes to your mind because what should come to your mind or what the legislators want to come to your mind is the tech monopolies. But unfortunately, their law applies to every company. And unless you have specifically targeted legislation or specifically targeted regulation, I'm talking company by company level specificity. Um, it won't work, A, and you'll actually just help the tech monopolies because they have the power, resources, everything to comply better with the rules than anyone else. It'll just hurt your startup community, your innovation community. So it needs to be specifically targeted. It needs to focus on supply. And even if you can figure all this out, and even if your, you know, your, your, your justice department, your legal department can make it all the way through all this stuff, are you going to break these companies up? No, the, you're not going to break the company up. What you're going to do is you're going to get a couple things. One, you're going to get a nice settlement. And B, you will get supply side protections, which are needed. Let's take the example of Uber. California passed this atrocious AB5 law saying that they want to protect the gig economy workers. Really, it was just a money grab to, to get more money and classify more workers as uh, W-2 employees versus 1099, which means California gets more money. The two biggest gripes of producers on a, an Uber, but more holistically across pretty much all these platforms, um, are there any constraints around the platform increasing their take rate, right? If I'm an Uber driver and you take 20% from me today, if I'm an Amazon seller and you take 15% from me today, at that tech monopoly scale, there's nothing stopping the monopoly from just saying, well, I'm going to take 25% Uber, right? Or I'm going to take 20%. Amazon's just going to increase it by 33% up to 20%. There is nothing stopping that from happening. And if you're a producer, you just kind of need to capitulate and, ag and agree with it. Um, and, and, and those are the very difficult things to navigate. So number one is control or visibility or, or a mechanism for suppliers, producers to be protected by arbitrary price increases on the take rate. That's one. Two is um, a rebuttal system or some kind of refutal system if you are a producer and the platform penalizes you, right? If you're an Uber driver and someone complains about you or we've had people comment on, on my videos about this topic uh, from someone that was working at Instacart. And he said, you know, a customer complained about me. They kicked me off the platform. It was my whole livelihood. It wasn't what was happened. That wasn't the case. I wasn't able to repeal or, or rebut it to Instacart. I couldn't get in touch with anyone at Instacart. And now I just lost all my income. If the platform penalizes you, they kick you off. Or on content platforms, you know, they shadow ban your content, they suspend your account, right? There's all different, there's there's a whole different spectrum of, of penalization by the platform down to the producer. How can there be a mechanism 
where if the platform does say permanently ban you or take really aggressive action on you, is is there any protection built in by the government to protect suppliers and producers to have a mechanism to rebut or refute or present their side of the story? That's the nature of the conversation we need to have. It needs to be company specific, right? Because the way that an Amazon takes advantage of their sellers uh, is different than how Apple would do it or Google would do it or Facebook would do it. Hi, this is Alex from Winner Take All. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the content. Feel free to leave a comment, ask us questions, and definitely make sure to join us on our next live stream.